My name is Marcos Morcillo. I'm the director of Mycologia Forestal Aplicada or Forestry and Applied Mycology in English, which we call it Mycophora. I got introduced into this uh, sector, truffles and mycology, when I finished my degree in biology and then I, I started to do research in the department with uh, mycorrhizal mushrooms, especially edible mycorrhizal mushrooms. And, um, and then I got inoculated one day with my professor. We were 30 years ago, so that, that I had 22, now I have 52. And, uh, and they asked me that they need two arms to dig holes and to make a truffle plantation. And so 30 years ago, we started making that plantation. And since that, I got inoculated with a truffle patient. I think one of the main pillars of uh, Mycophora is that we are uh, based on research and uh, so we spend a lot of time on trying to develop new products and technologies for the truffle business. Well, uh, you asked me for the process that we used to inoculate the trees and to produce truffle trees. I can, I mean, all these, if I tell you, I need to kill you. But the, the thing is that this, this process or this know-how, it's protected by intellectual property rights. And in fact, it's one of the technologies we license overseas. And, but more or less, it's normally, it's a process that it takes a year. It starts by Christmas time, you're gonna sow a seed these are pines, but for the other black truffle, we mainly work with oak, so you will sit an acorn. By Christmas, after two months, when they develop, develop secondary roots, you put in contact with the truffle, you inoculate, that we call, and after a few months, five, six, eight months later, the, the tree fully get mycorrhized with truffles, and these trees can go to the market. The substrate that, uh, that almost every truffle grower in Spain and almost overseas, they are adapting these techniques as well. Uh, it's, it's super important because uh, since um, maybe just 10 years ago, we, we started to understand how the truffle reproduce. All these new DNA techniques, uh, they, it was like opening a black box and then understanding how the truffle works in the soil and it says, oh, uh, so it's like that. So when I'm planting this tree, I'm just planting the female of the truffle. So there is a lack of males in the soil and we know nowadays that all the males, they come from new spores you need to add every single spring into the orchard. In fact, uh, how we work, it's we ended up working with, uh, with Laumon because uh, we we need to use a huge amount of truffles and we cannot use any truffle. Not any truffle can, can be used for producing inoculum. It needs to be in a specific size, type. Uh, we, need to, we don't know if there is a genetic treat that it makes that a truffle is bigger than another. So just in case we use large truffles, normally over 100 grams and, uh, or 100 to 100 grams, then it's a lot less PCRs and, and tests on the lab that we need to do. And, and we need someone who can provide you in order to sell it, we move every year, we are using 300 kilos, maybe this year, so other years more. So 300 kilos, to get 300 kilos, you need to at least analyze probably a ton of truffles one by one. So not every supplier can offer you one ton of truffles of a certain grade, of a certain type and size uh, during the season to, to use that, uh, that volumes of inoculums to produce our own products, but all the inoculums that we supply overseas to other, other nurseries and growers in the world. The last years, the truffle business has really taken off and, and, and it's taken off seriously in other countries. So, the, like in every other Mediterranean climate where you can find four different climate seasons, so you get the four seasons, that it's a Mediterranean climate and you can grow truffles. That is in Chile, in, in Argentina, in South Africa, in Australia, New Zealand, island of Tasmania, uh, and then in, other, in the north, northern hemisphere, it's most of the Mediterranean, but then you get the United States, it's, it's starting to go really seriously. So at the end, we have been in all these places with nurseries producing truffle trees. 
You're asking why Spain is so successful and a leading country in the production of truffles. And I think it's because first, there's many research groups in Spain doing, I mean, fundamental research is good and it needs to be done, but they are doing a lot of applied research. Then there is a really good transfer of these results, the outcome from the research to the growers, to the, to the business. And so they are adapting pretty fast all the new techniques and development from the research into the industry. And uh, maybe the, the other thing is that there is really an industry. There's thousands of growers. In Spain, there's more than 20,000 hectares of truffle farms. So that means thousands of growers that they are developing themselves. They are always looking for ways to produce more truffles, to reduce the costs of management, and to reduce the cost to produce one kilo of truffles. So they are developing new implements, new tools, new ways to, to do everything better and faster. And maybe third and most important point is that we in Spain cannot rely on the rain. So people has been systematically investing on irrigation. In irrigation, it's half of the cost of any truffle farms. Most than the trees and everything is the irrigation. And a good technified irrigation, especially with sensors monitoring, a truffle 80% is water, so we need to keep moist the soil and the truffle, especially the black truffle, it's formed in early summer and it grows during the summer. And in the old times, maybe 40 years ago, it was raining during the summer. With a few thunderstorms, they can rely on the rain, but not nowadays. With the climate, global climate change, heat waves, lack of rain, if we don't invest on irrigation, we are not gonna get truffles. But because we invested, no matter the climate, no matter how it's going to be the summer, we normally can have a good, a good production year every year. There is an increasing interest on developing other truffle species. The, the market is asking for that. Plus, if you are a grower from uh, northern countries in Europe, which is too cold, to plant black truffle, which is a, a winter truffle, but you can grow burgundy truffle, which is a truffle that grows in the fall. So in, uh, for instance, here we are growing pines with tuberborkii. Tuberborkii is a wheat truffle with uh, now less market, but the market is increasing. And one of the other truffles that we are focusing a lot of uh, research and efforts is try to develop the, the farming of tuber magnatum, the white Italian, Italian truffle. And because now we, we know how to produce a truffle tree, we set up all the DNA lab in order to track the mycelium and the mycorrhizas in the nursery and in the soil. But honestly, we know nothing about farming this truffle. So we will need a few years to to know how, how we should manage, should we cultivate, how we irrigate, how it reproduces, all these kind of things. So we are like, like black truffle 20 years ago when we started producing these truffle trees, but now knowing a lot more, honestly, with an, a lot of amazing techniques uh, that will help us to go faster on that research. Yeah, the first advice to one grower who wants to start growing truffles, I think would be do the, the homework, do a proper due diligence. So check first your climate, your soil, and um, if it's gonna be suitable, if you can grow, because nowadays we can grow truffles anywhere in the world. But one thing is grow one, two fruit bodies, and another is get a commercial crop and make money. Uh, so there are two different things. And that's why it's do the due diligence. Second, it's uh, when you plant trees, double check and analyze these trees. This is a major thing that helps as well the Spanish industry to take off seriously. We, if you double check and you check the quality of the trees before you plant, um, you know you're gonna succeed. The third thing, and maybe the most important, is do not plant if you don't have water to irrigate. So if you are not going to have a minimum of one, better two million liters per hectare per year, that means 2,000 cubic meters per hectare per year, don't plant truffles. Because we cannot rely in the rain. 